Good morning. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends and people watching us online. The Minister of Energy of the Republic of Cyprus is honored to co-organize this three days conference with the Cyprus Institute on the decarbonization of the energy sector in the Mediterranean and Middle East, where the important role of CSP will be demonstrated. I take this opportunity to welcome all participants and wish you great success to your participation in this event. Special thanks to the Cyprus Institute, the Professor Papadopoulos, and Manuel Blanco for the high quality work and all the efforts made for organizing this conference. The conference is addressing an issue of high global significance. Many countries in every corner around the world are facing scarcity rising energy demand, energy security, and climate changes. The decisions that we will take in these next few months will determine the legacy we will lead to the future generation, and that indeed is a huge challenge for all of us. Cyprus is at the crossroad of major decisions for the development of its energy mix towards 2050 targets. And has to face a lot of challenges while different possible pathways should be seriously considered and analyzed. Renewable energy technologies are playing an increasingly important role in energy in societies. As most, as most of you know, Cyprus ranks first in the world in the use of source of solar energy for water heating. Manufacturing of solar heaters of solar water heaters in Cyprus actually began in the early 60s and the solar thermal industry today accommodates around 44 small and medium sized companies. Currently, more than 92% of households and 52% of hotels are equipped with solar water heating systems. As a result, the island has approximately one square meter of installed solar collectors per capita which is a world record according to the European Solar Thermal Industry Federation. We envisage that this conference will serve a platform for the various individuals such as funds, technology suppliers, governmental officials, academics, academic and project developers to further support solar thermal technologies in the Middle East North Africa region, acknowledge the role of CP projects we play regarding storage solutions, heating process, desalination, and electricity production. Experience has shown that iron environments create specific conditions which require tailored technical solutions. Among the strategic priorities of all iron is the further integration of renewables in parallel with energy efficiency solutions, solutions in cycles. The renewable energy systems in the electricity sector may compete, may compete on equal footing with the electricity production from conventional fuels, even in the case where they are combined with storage solutions. Regarding our implementation of the 2020 rest targets, Cyprus has already overachieved achieved its third indicative trajectory for rest by having 9.27% of the renewables in its gross final energy consumption in 2017, compared to 7.45% included in the relevant European directive, directive for the years 2015-2016, while less percent, percentage in the electricity production was 8.4%. More specifically, rest mixture in the electricity sector consists of 121 megawatt of PV systems, 157 megawatt from six wind plants, 12.8 megawatt from 14 biomass biogas units. Rest contribution in the heating and cooling sector in 2016 was 23.7%, showing that we have already overachieved our ideal target of 23.5% in 2020. This is mainly due to the huge use of solar heaters. The 2020 targets for Cyprus, for Cyprus government in the sector of renewables and energy efficiency are promoted through the implementation of support programs, 
since 2004. During these years, more than 200 million euros were mobilized from the rest fund, leading to investments of more than 1 billion euros in an energy in all energy sectors, energy efficiency, electricity production for waste, rest heating and cooling and transport. Based on preliminary studies done from ministries consultants, these investments will continue to increase in the next decade and will lead to total investment between 14 to 15 billion euros until 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, Cyprus remains an isolated energy island with no connections with other electricity networks and without a central storage infrastructure yet. The Cyprus government planning is based on the following five pillars of the energy union. Energy security, development of the domestic energy market, contribution to energy efficiency, promotion of decarbonization, research, innovation, and competitiveness. Where the global energy sources can play a major role. Federal penetration of renewables, especially of solar technologies, will benefit many sectors of our economy and society with creation of new work positions, especially for installers and technicians. Moreover, it will contribute to the reduction of the air pollution and the associated, the associated health problems and diseases. As far as the energy planning towards 2030, the Cyprus is now preparing the draft energy and climate national plan. Various local institutions, associations, governmental departments and universities are involved in this process. Cyprus Institute, along with JSC and SRSS, are already providing support to both the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of Environment in various sectors such as weather forecasting, energy system modeling, promotion of CSP technologies, and reduction in greenhouse gas pollutants. Up to date, more than 18 different scenarios and pathways have been examined that provide insights for the key policy decisions that will determine the evolution of the energy sector in Cyprus. Different scenarios that will be demonstrated later on by other presentations will provide confident insights on the impact of different policy decisions. Undoubtedly, the role of research and innovation is crucial for the introduction of more efficient and cost optimum technologies in the energy sector. New technologies like smart meters, smart grids, storage systems, digitalization of energy grids, blockchain technology, and energy management systems should be further improved and contribute to the decarbonization of the energy sector. Today's conference provides the opportunity to key stakeholders, public authorities, universities, research centers, and enterprises to discuss and share knowledge and best practices in the sectors of solar energy and storage technologies. The electrification of transport that will lead in increase in the electricity demand, the development of rest storage units, solar cooling, district heating and cooling, and some are some of the topics that the energy sector needs to identify and provide solutions through research and innovation. Concluding, I would like to thank once more the Cyprus Institute for this initiative and all participants and distinguished beast speakers from abroad for their valuable contribution to this conference. I would like also to thank all the web and attendee attendees from all over the world and IRENA that help us to disseminate this event to its network. Thank you all for your kind attention. I wish you all the best for the conference. Thank you.